Okay, so I've been promising to do this tutorial for a long time, but today is the day. I'm gonna walk you through starting a project in DaVinci Resolve 14, importing footage, creating a timeline, and then exporting it out in a file format that works on your system. So keep in mind, this is for absolute beginners. I'm not going into any color grading theory or anything like that. We just wanna get you up and running with DaVinci Resolve 14. So step one, you need to either have or get DaVinci Resolve 14. I'm assuming if you're here, you have already got it. If not, you come to this site and I will put a link in the description and you'll just click download here and choose your operating system. Um, this is the one you're probably gonna be choosing. This is the free version. So you open up DaVinci Resolve uh, and you're probably gonna be presented with a window like this. We just double click on Untitled Project. And it'll open right up into the edit pane. Uh, if you notice down on the bottom, we have media, edit, color, fairlight, and deliver. Um, for some reason it opens in edit, but we can't really edit anything because we have no footage. So first thing we wanna do is click on the media tab and navigate to wherever we put our footage from our camera, assuming you've copied it onto a drive. So find that drive, find that space wherever you put it. Um, I created a little project here. Okay, so here's all our footage. Um, you can just click and drag to cover all of these and you drag it down into this media pool down here. First thing it does is it asks if I wanna change the frame rate of the current project. We want it to match our footage, uh, especially in this case, so I'm gonna say change. Now, if you notice along the left here, these are some bins on how things are organized and we wanna stay organized. So first thing I like to do is create a footage folder because we have timelines and footage. Uh, and we even have potentially music if we're editing in here uh, and maybe ADR audio tracks. So first thing we'll do is right click over in this pane and click on add bin. I'm gonna call this one footage. And then I'm gonna click back up on this master um, bin and I'm gonna select all the footage here, but not the actual footage folder. I'm gonna drag that into the footage folder. So now that's all organized in there. Now, so we're pretty much done with this tab. Next step is edit. And even if all we wanna do is color grade, we still have to click on the edit tab because we have to have a timeline in order to color grade. So up in here, you see our footage folder now, otherwise, you know, we're looking, it could be potentially a lot of files there. So if you create a timeline there, it could just get lost in the mix. So that's why I've, I've created this folder structure. So now we'll right click in here in the empty area, click timelines, new timeline. And we just take all the defaults here. I'm just gonna even the name, hit create. And now we have a timeline. So next thing, we will open up this footage folder. I'm gonna select all of these. And like I said, you can click and drag. Uh, I'm gonna do Command A on my Mac here. That selects everything. I'll drag the footage down to here onto the timeline and let go. Now, if you wanted to edit this, this is obviously where you would edit it. And you'd use these tools up here to to cut, put cuts in there and resize. Now, I'm not gonna go into all that detail right now. I'm just showing you how to find the areas where you do the type of work you wanna do. Mainly, mainly getting into the color grading tab. So that's what we're gonna do next. We'll click on color, tab down on the bottom, and we're there. So now this is where you would color grade your footage. And it's a node-based system. So the, over here, these are the nodes. Um, to add a node, we click up on uh, nodes and add serial node, and it creates another node. So in each one of these things, everything I do over here, anything I change, um, so I'm gonna drastically change this just to, of course that looks terrible, but the idea is just to show you um, the functions here. So that's on the first node. And now on the second node, um, let's say I want to do something else with curves or whatever. This is how you can build your look. Anyway, now to enable 
or disable all the nodes, I do Option D, that turns all of them off, and Option D again, turns them back on. And for an individual node to turn it on and off to see what effect that is having, you use Command D, and Command D again to turn it back on. In order to see this screen full screen, it's Command F, Same thing, everything's a toggle, so the Command F will make it small again. There's also an Option F, which you can just get rid of the nodes so you can see it a little bit bigger. And then you can still control all these things that you want to modify. Anyway, there's a lot of other functions in here. This is only the beginner video, so I'm not going to go into any excruciating detail here. But um, next thing, let's just point out that we have scopes over here. And you can choose between parade, waveform, vector scope for your color. Uh, and this line is your skin tone line. So you're wanting to massage these uh, color wheels. Sometimes if you're focusing on skin tone and try to get that line in alignment with that line. And also histogram. I mainly use parade for the most part and a little bit of vector scope. One more thing is if you want to create a look, like you've spent a lot of time on a single shot and you have more shots in that same scene, so lighting's not really set up too much differently, if you'd like, you can create some sort of a template, which is grabbing a still. Um, it actually has, I use two main functions with this. One is to actually create a still, so I can right click and hit export, and then choose uh, a JPEG file if I like, and name the file, and I can export that JPEG. Let's say to the desktop. So now, let's just minimize this for a second. I've got a still that if I wanted to put that up in social media, say, look, this is a new project we're working on, um, that's how we do that. The other function is if I want to copy all the node settings, all that color grade I just did, and I want to put it on the next clip, I select the clip down here, and then I drag this and drop it on there. The other thing is we have a little arrow here, and we also have a hand if we need to move this around in case it gets hidden behind one of the other windows. And anyway, um, let's say we finished all of our color grading, or in this case, even if we just did these two shots and we want to render these shots out. Next is to go into the Deliver tab. I won't go into Fairlight in this video. We'll go into that on another video if there's some interest. Um, that's for your audio mixing. So we'll click on Deliver, which is where we export or render out our footage. And one thing to be made aware of here is that along here you see this line here this is showing us what we're selecting to be rendered so if i wanted to only get a couple of clips like say these two clips i would get to the beginning of that clip and i would hit the eye on my keyboard that creates an endpoint and then i would go a little further down and i get to the end of this clip because these are the two clips that i want to render and i'm going to click o on my keyboard and now these are the two that should be selected okay um Here's the area. We don't really have to worry about this stuff up here. This is when we're doing round tripping again. That's for another video. Um, this area here is where we're setting all of our render settings for this video. Um, the codec, you can pick uh, in this thing the wrapper, so it's going to be a .mov file because it's in Quick QuickTime. Um, and then you can pick which codec you're going to use, uh, like a DNX. HD, probably if you're on a PC. On Mac, we usually use Apple ProRes. Um, depending on the quality of the footage and what it was captured on, you would pick which version of ProRes or DNX that you want to render it out to. So uh, this is 4K footage, 10-bit color. So I'm going to want to use 422HQ. It is a 422 file. So I want to maintain that quality. And the resolution, like I said, it was 4K, um, so, but it was 4K, um, Cinema 4K. I'm fine with, because my computer can handle it a little bit better, I'm going to do UHD 4K. Um, and then for the frame rate, 
I'm never going to change that because this is the native frame, frame rate that I shot it in. Um, next thing is, oh, sorry, before we move on, the render, single clip or individual clips, this is important. Single clips is when all of these individual files get rendered out as one long file. That can be a problem if you plan on editing this in Adobe Premiere later. You want the individual clips the way that they were captured in the camera, obviously. So uh, we're going to say individual clips there. And then now let's look at the audio. Don't really have to do anything. And then file, the, this is the way that we're naming the file. It's not telling us where. I'm going to show you that in a second. This is how it's going to be named. I like to use source name and unique file names. That way it, it bears some resemblance to the original footage that was captured. This is the color corrected or color graded version of the file. So I want this file to basically be the same, but I'm going to put it in a different folder. I'm going to name a folder CC. We're going to do that in a second. So location, this is where we're going to save these files. Let's click on browse. And I know that I created a project, this project here. Okay, so, and there's a folder called footage. What I'm going to do is create another folder in there called CC color corrected and I'll click OK. So then when we render this, it's going to go into that folder. So now this button comes into play. We click add to render queue and it pops it in over here. Now nothing's happening yet because we have to click the start render. So let's do that. Okay, so now it says completed over here, so we know that's done. Um, if we take a look, we can see the files right here. So anyway, the other thing is if we wanted to select all of these, all we really need to do is right click on this line somewhere around here and click select all. And then do the same thing, add to render queue again and hit start render. And it's probably also a good idea to save your project. So let's do that. Um, save project. We name it something. Beginner tutorial. Save. Now we're good. Well, I hope that was helpful. Make sure you subscribe. I got future videos coming up where we go into a bunch of different ways that you can create professional color grades. And uh, thank you so much for watching.